praying for was um, basically a partner that would help me in life, uh, help me, if you will. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm always busy, I'm always doing something. I'm never home. <laughs> I'm never home. I'm, I'm barely ever home. I don't get sleep like that. So um, I needed somebody who was going to help me in, in areas that I needed help with in my character because it's good to be spiritual, but you also want to have be able to um, be okay with your human side and have fun um, and just, just let loose with certain things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not saying for my Christian people that's listening to be carnal, but I'm saying, you know, it's okay to have fun. It's okay to not always just simply focusing. I was just always focusing on, I was either at work or I was ministering. There was no really in between like fun time, fun time, downtime with me. I was always on the move, always doing something. If I wasn't working, then I was ministering to somebody else about something. So I just mm -hmm. wanted some time um, with somebody that I could experience some fun with and just enjoy life with. And that's when God basically told me to reach back out to Christina. And it's funny because I had already previously in my life met two separate times um, before, which is kind of odd right right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then I reached out to her in February. I believe it was the 15th that we actually went out and got something to eat. And we, you know, we talked a little after that, and then she let me know that she had a boyfriend. I said, I said, cool, <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> you know, no harm, no harm done. I had already been a single for a while, anyways, and I was just having at that point. Um, I was, I was just enjoying her time, you know, and I had told her I would always be. We, we had got to gotten to the point just in that short, short amount of time within that month, we had gotten um pretty close with talking to each other. So I had told her we could always be friends and everything. Um, so we continued to conversate and all that. And basically, I don't know what happened between her and the person that she has had been in a relationship with, but after that, we continued to talk as just friends. And we built a bond from there. And I'm kind of glad that it was, I guess you can say, quote, unquote, um, the friendship zone, I guess. <laughs> the friend zone. Um, but oh, I, that's, I did. I guess you said in your own words, in your words, I friend zoned you. I guess you can. Yeah, I guess you can say that. In a, we, in a way, yeah. But yeah, I, I feel like I feel zone. like not looking back on it. Mm. I believe that for relationships, that's the best way to start out. Um, because you, there's no pressure in having this romantic vibe or no pressure in pushing something forward. You're at, at just being friends. You're learning about each other. There's no mask that you have on. Your, your mask is off kind of when you, when you're just friends with somebody with a friend more so than a, somebody who you're interested in romantically when you're first dating somebody. A lot of times people don't really, I feel like people don't really show their true selves. But us just being friends, we was able to have conversations with each other and just talk about life in general without wearing a mask. So that's what I kind of, I liked about the situation. Yeah, and I, I feel like, I feel like we didn't go out during the time that we met, the second time we met we were like, you know, in our early 20s because we needed some growing to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for me to go through, I, while I went through, I don't think I would have appreciate what, um, if I met you back then, if, you know, I, I wouldn't have appreciate you now if I didn't go through what I went through before. Because mm -hmm. I see yeah. a difference. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So do so, you you want to get into the principles or is there anything else you think they should you could oh, no, we we'll tell them about? Right.
it because we have 21 principles. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do the first one? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got 21 principles. I know yeah. it's normally. Oh, guys. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a lot. Why they got twenty one principles? <laughs> we so felt we felt like it was a good thing to have a foundation, um, almost like having promises to each other and mm-hmm. having it written down. I think is always good, so you could go back and say, okay, this is what we promised each other. This is what the foundation of our relationship is. This is what we can hold each other to. And we're and also remember about each other, so that when hard times come, you know you can have that to look back on. And they they say pretty much when you write something down, it's easier to remember it as opposed to not writing it down. Mm-hmm. So that's why we chose to we chose to do that once we started dating. So the first one of our principles of our relationship. Number one, and this was this was kind of random. I don't think this was like any particular order that we had. We were just putting down random stuff as we could think think of it, wasn't we? <laughs> yeah, we were. We were just okay. What should be the next one? <laughs> yeah. so it was is important ones though. They're really they're relevant. They're really important to exactly. us. Though. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So so the first one we have is honesty. Honesty. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, like, yeah, that's part of our podcast. It's all about being transparent, right? <laughs> Definitely. I, I think my my thing with honesty was with, with me and her. What we chose to do is we in the early early going of our relationship, and he, even in our friendship, but um. We had already said some stuff about each other as friends, um, told, e- told each other some things about ourselves, and then um, even more as we got into the relationship. And with that honesty, we pretty much laid down everything in the beginning, like the bad and the good, like right there in the beginning. Like normally people, you know, they wait a while before they start, you know, laying out there their baggage and everything like that. But we wanted to kind of get the, all of that out of the way and say, this is what it is, you know, and, you know, the whole thing, the exes mm-hmm. and um, people you used to talk to or things that you've done wrong in the past. Um, even the good things about ourselves or things that we thought that we could work on with each, on ourselves. We was just being really transparent with each other and, what we wanted out of our relationship. We were just being totally transparent. Yeah, and and since we are since we were transparent with each other, no one cannot come to me and say, Oh well John did this and that and that. No, because I'd be like, Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'd be like, that's not gonna phase me because no one cannot come to us. I'm putting it out there and say say anything to us because we already know. So if you were thinking of doing that, you yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where a lot of um people mess up in their relationships and even in their marriages, they don't discuss these things. So then later on you get some ex or some random person. Now it doesn't even have to be somebody that you was romantically with. It can just be any, you know, hating Mad, old, miserable, friend, miserable hate. Yeah. It, it can be some random person online that just see you, um, being yeah. happy or, yeah, you know, yeah. just hitting you up and say, hey, you know, they did this or you know they they was a part of this or they did this in their life, you know, mm-hmm. just because they misery loves company. They people want you to be miserable with them or if they see something that they want, mm-hmm. they don't, you know. They say they say basically if I can't have it too, I don't want nobody to have it. So we made sure we put we put a stop to that before. We we wanted to make sure that the only person that that would break us up is God Himself. If if He mm-hmm. wanted us to be apart, then that was the only person that was going to get in between us. Yep. Not our and not not our family, not our friends, not strangers. No mm-hmm. one. Yeah. 
So, yep, that there. That's number one. Um, next is number two is this a big one for me? This a <laughs> real big one. Okay, so um, I'm I'm super exaggerating, but it's communication for mm. me. This is big because. And the communication department, I wasn't, I never been like um, positively communicated, you know, and I never communicated to someone in a positive way mm-hmm. when I was with It was never positive because I always ended up arguing with the guy I was with. It was very exhausting. And um, I've always been also, I, I guess a few people may notice this about me, especially my family, but. I guess you could say I can be uh, offended about things, offensive about things sometimes, mm. because I feel like somebody's always attacking me. So that's mm. what I, that's how my communication was set up between like how I was brought up to with when I was younger, I was always told what to do and I couldn't even speak up or whatever. So it comes down to it, it stems from childhood, but also it stems from dating people to different guys we'll always argue or end up in an argument somehow, some type of argument mm. would, would create tension. But me and John, we don't have arguments. Well, we haven't had arguments, but we've had disagreements. But I, like, John is not, we're really not a confrontational person. I was told that I always try, like, to pick an argument, but I don't even think, do you think I'm like that, John? Like, do I feel like, do you feel like? Oh, I, I don't think, I don't think it's that. I think what it is, is that especially as a black woman, but as a woman, period, um, you're an outspoken woman and you don't really hold your opinion back. You kind of just, you give it. You don't, you know, sugarcoat anything or you're not, uh, I'll just say, I guess, laid back or quiet or you're just outspoken, you know. And I think a lot of men, depending on their age, and not even, you know what, not, I can't even say their age, but a lot of men can't really adjust to having a strong woman in their life mm. if they don't know how to handle that. Because when you have an outspoken woman in your life or a strong woman in your life, that requires you to get be even even that much more stronger yourself, especially if you're trying to be the leader in the relationship as a man. When I say leader, I don't, I don't mean control. It's a difference between control and a leader. That's a whole other podcast. But <laughs> but what I'm saying is that it's, it's a definitely a difference with having a strong woman that's always speaking her mind. You're going to have to have some kind of um, I guess strength about your own self and be, like I said, just being that much more stronger in your own character and mm-hmm. letting her speak her mind without you feeling belittled because if you're not ready, that's how you know if you're ready, you're truly ready mm-hmm. to lead or not to because if you can't handle not just in general, we're dealing with a strong woman, but dealing with leading people in general, if you can't handle people who have strong opinions, you're not ready to lead because that means you're not strong enough yourself mm-hmm. to lead strong people. Mm-hmm. If you're still, if you want to lead um, weak people, if you will, that means you're still weak yourself and mm-hmm. you need to still be following. You need to still be in a following position. So I would say on a lot of women who might be listening right now, you might think because, you know, a lot of guys say, you know, certain women talk too much or they, they're too strong. Well, I think it's just yeah. that they have to see in themselves, okay, this is going on. So how can I push myself to be that much more stronger? To where she, yeah. she will follow me. Yeah. In that sense, you know. Yeah, I want to add for the communication that we put it as our principle because you know everyone say you know communication is important in a relationship, it's key and all that. But mm-hmm. 
are you really communicating with that person? You have, I will, you know, you have to reflect on how you're communicating because that's really a big deal, especially when you, when you go to the next level and become and get married, like communication mm. is a big thing. And yeah. while we have that as our second one. Well, I just want to say one more thing about communication. Yeah. The last episode, if you guys caught in the last episode with Pastor John and Tasha Haskell, Pastor mm-hmm. John actually mentioned about how you have to actually ask somebody what they mean when they say it, because your definition oh, yeah. of what somebody else, what somebody says might be different from what they're saying. So just because I, I say something, you might take it a different way than what I actually mean, because mm-hmm. we grew up in a different state. We grew up in a different household. We grew up in a different church. You know, you grew up in a different way, in a, di- in, di- in a different way of speaking, a different way of communicating. So you have, it's important to ask, like, okay, what do you mean by that? And it's oh, a, that's it's a good point. Yeah. That's a yeah. good point, because I can honestly say that the people I've been with, the guys I've been with, I would take things, they would say, I would take it a certain way. And mm-hmm. then I would start, I would become upset. But then they didn't mean that. So then I had that going on. Um, and yeah, so it is important to ask. If you don't ask, you will never, you won't understand that person either. So, if you don't ask, you'll sit there and and like, you're all on the fence yeah. while the other person is going on. Yeah, yeah. So it's you know when when communicating is important to ask your partner what do you mean, like where are you, where are you coming from with that exactly point. Yeah. Yep. So number three kind of goes with it. It's openness. Mm-hmm. So openness pretty much is being open to each other just with who we are, um, what we desire in the relationship, just being open, period, and what we want out of life and being open to each other. Not Basically, you, I, you can't be in a relationship if you're closed off, if you have walls, walls all around you, you know. A lot of people put up nowadays, they, especially in our generation, they put up walls so that nobody um, can get in. But the problem with that is that when you put up walls, not only can nobody get in, but you can't get out. But, yeah. yeah, that's, yep. So I can honestly say, I think overall, I'm an open person. I am, a, I, it does, it's not hard for me to open up to people. Mm. Once, like, if I don't, cares back to being, um, well, if I don't trust someone, then I'm not mm. going to open up to that person. That's just personally mm. how I am. Yeah. Um, they break my trust. That's it. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so for our next one, number four, is respect. Mm. Um, respect, we put, we put that on the list because we, we want to make sure that we respect not only who we are as a person, um, but who we are, you know, respect how we feel, yeah, respect how we feel about certain things. Um, also, like, respect, um, like our, I, I don't know. The way we feel? Yeah, where we feel. Uh, our opinions you know yes exactly our opinions and all that that's important to me actually that is a big thing for me because in the past I was um I was with people who disrespected me but then on the flip side I accepted that disrespect I would let them continue disrespecting me by just being with them and not just Mm -hmm. off right away or just let them know okay this is how I feel Actually, I will let them know, but then if they keep doing it, then I would, I still will be with them. So I feel like I was just disrespecting myself because I will allow that to happen. But, mm. um, but yeah, we respect each other. That's important because we, we come from, you know, we have different childhoods, different backgrounds and all. But the one thing we do have in common is that we both were brought up in a, in a Christian household, so that's what we have in common. Yeah. We we definitely respect, you know, each other's religious beliefs, too, but we have similar beliefs, so that's what makes it easier. Mm. Mm. Definitely. Um, 
So number five is unconditional love. Mm -hmm. So I guess what we meant by unconditional love is kind of how, not saying that we are God, but kind of how God loves you. Basically, unconditional love, like, doesn't matter if the person gets sick. You're not going to run out on the person, you know. Mm -hmm. If the person is having a, a down time, you know, mentally or emotionally, you don't just, you know, up and leave on the person or if the person has done something wrong, mm -hmm. you know, you forgive, you forgive the person or you, you, you know, you communicate and you talk and your love is not conditioned on what, what their condition is or what, even what they can just do for you, but just loving the person for who they are. Exactly. I, I also look at, I view unconditional love as also making sacrifices, mm. like no matter what, or like in order to like love someone unconditionally, you have to make sacrifices. You can't be selfish. So mm. I look at uh, unconditional love as, as that as well. It involves sacrifices too. Mm. Yeah. It's infinity. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. It's not, it, this, whatever circumstance, circumstances it is is not going to affect affect the love, whatever mm. it is. So that's what. Definitely. That's Give what us we number have. six. Number six. Okay, six is compromise, and compromise is. I I guess it it does connect with sacrifices because, for example, let's say. Um. Sometimes you know, me and John, we we're busy bodies <laughs> and yeah. we sometimes we may not see each other but in to compromise or to make it work one person even they they can you know i may get off work and i may come by after work that's compromising hmm. yeah so i think Instead that's of getting the, the sleep that you probably could do get or you know compromising something as small as you know, where do you want to go eat? It might be oh, something yeah. that you're not used to going to eat. Well, we're, or, we don't have a problem with that. We both love to eat. Yeah, that's the I'll just use <laughs> oh, an example. It could be a could be a movie. It could be a, it could be anything that you. We love movies too, so. Yeah, so because yeah. it could be, you know, yeah. just little just little stuff. Yeah. Um, that me... maybe something that you're not used to doing, the other person might enjoy doing. And you never know. You might find out once you do it, you might actually yeah. like doing it. So, Enjoy it, yeah. Um, so number seven is being spontaneous. So what we meant by that is basically, you know, having fun when we go out on dates and everything, going to different places. You know, COVID is, is going on right now, but definitely Ooh. going out. <laughs> <laughs> going out and traveling, seeing the world, going out to different dating spots, you know, not pretty much doing a typical dinner and a movie thing, but just going out and having just good fun with each other. Yes, I agree. I don't think we're going to have an issue with that. It's going to be real cool. We're going to have a lot of that happening. Yeah, the virus get out the way. I'm I'm just done with this virus for real. It's been how many weeks? I don't even know. I lost count. It's but been months. It's yeah. been months now. Yeah. All right. So number eight, we the next one is understanding. We mm. decided to put that down because in order to be with someone, you have to understand them, to understand the way they think. You know, understand where they coming from when they are open to you, you know, um, I actually, I'm still learning about you, I still learning mm. about John and understanding where he comes, where he's coming from sometime when we, and the way he thinks. So I think that's important. Just comprehending each other, mm. not just, not just like being able to communicate because you can communicate to someone, but you doesn't mean you understand them. Mm. You can, you can talk, you, you can talk whatever you want to talk. People yeah. talk a lot. 
<laughs> it doesn't mean mm-hmm. they comprehend. Mm. Yeah, so that's that's important to understand each other. Definitely. And with understanding, I think you need number nine. You need patience. Mm-hmm. You need patience when it comes to everything with each other. And when you're trying to understand somebody, it might not, you know, pretty much come off as something that is easy to intake or understanding anything. It's like when you're reading, when you're reading a book in English or math class, you might not understand it a while for, for a minute. You have to keep like rereading it over and over again until you like really understand it. And that can be like frustrating if you don't, you know, if you just take your time with it. And basically you, you come to understand what, whatever you need to understand. And that's, I feel like was what we was doing with each other is just having, you just have patience with that person and learning who they are mm-hmm. because, you know, being in different territory, if you're not used to being with um, this kind of person or you're not used to being do or doing certain things, you just take patience with each other and, and learning and, grow, and growing. Because I feel like mm-hmm. people always say, you know, oh, where we grew apart. But the thing is, is that for the rest of your life, you're always growing. You're going to always grow. Mm-hmm. So that, that takes patience. Yes, I, yeah, that, that's a big, that's a big thing. Right now we're, you know, that that's what's happening now. There, this, this virus is testing people's patience, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that's very important to have in a relationship. Next one is, this is number 10, loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, that's what, what, that song Rihanna would, Kendrick Lamar. Anyways, that's where I got that from. Um, but yeah, loyalty, of course that's important, of course, because you know, when you're when you show loyalty, you're like nothing will not get in the way of who you are with, who you stick with, right? And I I have to admit that I've uh, made mistakes in the past when it comes to that being loyal. Um and I'm not like proud of it, but it helped me to grow as a person that that I had to reflect on my behavior and and that you know you don't want to hurt someone you're with right mm-hmm. that's not that's i think that's pr- to be honest, I think people honestly have intention not to hurt anyone, but we end up hurting someone in our lives one way or another, and mm-hmm. um. And I don't know, I'm probably being optimistic, but I really feel like people don't tend mean to hurt people, you know. But mm-hmm. um but yeah, we I definitely we're definitely like we definitely nothing's gonna break this because like like John said, only God can only break this however he will break it if it has to happen that way. But I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. So definitely, um, loyalty. That's, that's definitely. Huge. I think that's something huge. Even nowadays, I think it's even probably harder. I think it was easier probably back in the nineties because you didn't have social media. You didn't have, you know, people going in your DMs and messages and yeah. stuff like that. That's so, true. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So number eleven is effort. Effort. Oh my goodness. So effort would be pretty much, I would say, putting an effort to show that you care, putting an effort. Yeah, I would say just putting an effort mainly for showing that you care about the person, effort and giving your time. I think when you give somebody your time, you're definitely showing that you're trying to put an effort into the relationship. And effort is almost like going with like Christina, what you were saying earlier, like with sacrifice. Yep, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Or is if you don't show someone you want to be with, some, if that person don't show you, or even vice versa, if you don't show that you want to be with someone, it's not going to work because that person going to think, oh, like you don't like them anymore, or love them, 
You don't want to mm-hmm. be around them. And actually, I've been through a situation like that. So, but with me and John, it's like we actually try to find ways. Especially, actually, I realized you, um, John was you definitely put effort into getting into you know, yeah. Getting, <laughs> because you you came in strong, you put a lot of effort. And I was like, oh wow. But and then that that never stopped though. And we have mm-hmm. we have to find creative ways now to do things because of this virus. But you know, once this virus is lifted, once it's over, yeah, we're gonna yeah, it's gonna be a lot that we can do and stuff. But even, a, lot of, a lot of entertainment and activities to do. Yeah, but even now we still put effort into. Um, you know, making sure we're communicating with each other, you know, putting effort into um, what else? Watch, you know, just chilling, really watching movies with each other. Oh, like that one time, remember when you we did that movie thing? Yeah, we was on a video chat, but it was the Netflix. We ordered, yeah, it was, oh, what was that? Netflix, and but. On Netflix, just so there's this thing on Netflix where it allows you to watch the movie with another person at the same time. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That was yeah. that was effort. That was that's an example of effort because we can't be together physically, but we still have fun because we we're able to watch a movie at the same time with each other and talk about yeah. it. And so it was cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and next. Our next, the next one we have is number 12 is grateful. And that goes, that kind of, I'm going to connect this to what I just said, that I, I'm grateful to just, you know, thankful that I met, I was, I'm able to have met someone like John, because you don't come across someone like this often. (laughs) And I almost gave up on meeting someone. I mean, I knew that God had someone for me, but I was just like, I was just done. <laughs> I didn't think it would happen this year. Out of all the years, like this year though, like God, really? Oh, I see what you're doing. Right? So, mm-hmm. so we're just grateful that, you know, of each other. You have to like think, be thankful for that person because tomorrow isn't promised, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, And we see that, you know, people are losing their lives and stuff. And, you know, if I... You know, if ever something ever happened to John, I'll be so like devastated. That that's why I'm grateful. Like I show him every day, I'm grateful for him just just by saying I love you. You can make a difference when you say that to someone. Mm. Because that shows that you're thankful for them. That you have, you know, that that's like genuine. You know, um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Wow, I don't got nothing to add to that. You said everything that I would say. <laughs> Um, yeah, you, you mirrored that, so, <laughs> um, See how we're gonna go, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go to 13, cause I ain't got nothing to add to that, <laughs> <laughs> so, 13 is fun, so we kind of mentioned that before, just having fun yes. with each other, mm-hmm. um, and number 14 is support, mm-hmm. mm. Which, yeah, so support, that's that's a big thing because, like, right now, the um, we we definitely are supporting each other. Like, we plan on um, not only having this business with, like, our podcast, we also plan on having our own businesses ourselves, like, individually. So, of course, we're going to always support each other. If someone is, like, down, then that other person, like, then – um the other person is going to be there so we have that um relationship where if you know if someone is um you know john was if you were going through something unless you lost your job right i will support you and like continue doing my part but also support you and help you i would like send you links to jobs and all that like that's how i'm a supportive person in general so Mm -hmm. Like if like that's just how I am because I don't know, I just I just like support I just like seeing people following their dreams. Okay. Mm-hmm. They I'm not a hater. Unless 
you disrespect me, then I have nothing to do with you unless we can talk it out, but that's it. <laughs> like, I have nothing to do with someone who disrespects me. But other than that, overall, I'm cool with people. But um, I'm just a supporter gen- in general. So with that being said, you know, um, John, you will definitely not have any problems with that in that area. <laughs> right with you. Do all the good and, and, you know, all the good times, all the challenging times, I'll be right there. Like, you know, and yeah, you definitely, that's a big, that's a big one principle because you're going to need that if you plan on, you know, the goals to, is marriage, that's important to have in in the marriage as well, too, to already set Definitely, that, you know. definitely. it's um, a big thing to support each other's dreams and and um, support each other. It doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's whether you, the person is thinking about going back to school or whether they're trying to get another job, they're trying to get another career, they're trying to follow their dreams or start a business. Um, support as far as um, if they're going through something mentally or emotionally or with a friend, with a family member. Um, they just need you. Sometimes people just need you to be there for them. You know, and that's what I, why I thought support was something big. Yeah. And that kind of goes into 15 is balance. Mm. Mm-hmm. So balance basically what we meant by that as well is balancing your time. I think that's important, especially when you're in a relationship and then if you plan on going into marriage and then when you go when you go into marriage as well, balance is very important with your life. Whether you when you're spending time with your significant other, spending time with your family, you're spending time just as an individual. Sometimes you just want to um sit on the couch by yourself. Some people like being alone. Some people like um uh cuddling and being up under the person. Um, some people like their own time to themselves or just going out, having fun, or you might be a homebody, you know, so you balance that. That, that kind of goes with compromising, like what we were saying before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Just, just that balance. Balance, balance. Balance that. <laughs> Have a balanced life, happy life. No, I don't know. <laughs> that is, that is. <laughs> Um, next is trust. Trust mm. is big, like you know, trust, trust. Right. So I wanted to connect that to our first principle, which is honesty, and mm. one of our other principles, which is loyalty. Once mm. you establish those principles, you will have um trust will always will already be there. That will automatically mm. create trust because if you're honest with that person, you know you you don't lie, you're not a liar, that mm. shows that person they can trust you. And um, if you're loyal to that person, despite people, like, talking, trying to talk to you, trying to um, get with you, whoever it is, mm. that doesn't phase you, you don't, you know, entertain that, that means that person can trust you no matter what. Mm. And so that's a big thing. Um, and once that, if that trust is broken, then, you know, it's hard to get that back uh, and to build that in a relationship. You know, I'm just speaking from experience, so <laughs> it's yeah. a real good place to be when you um when someone can trust you and you know that is yeah. you don't want you don't want that. So if you can establish being honest, you know, just be straightforward. I don't understand why people lie. I used to lie when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I I stopped because I always get caught. Like <laughs> well, let me just be start being being honest. Then, like, yeah. you see where it got me now. Like, you know, you know? yeah, definitely. I, I think it helps. it helps because people know where I'm coming from, so they can't be like, oh, well, Christina, you didn't say this, or I didn't know that's what you meant. Well, yeah, I already said it to you, so I'm mm-hmm. honestly, I'm very yeah. sure, so people know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't like you said, I don't sugarcoat stuff, so and that's the same people. I think if people are like that more, then. It won't um it won't be so much problem. Mm. You know, I mean, of yeah. course, that person would probably be upset, like if you did something that weren't that wasn't um. Yeah, but I think the person would be even more upset if 
the if somebody was lying about it yeah. as opposed to you just being straight up honest and telling the truth. I mean, the truth hurts, but at the same time, I think it feels worse when the person gives you a lie. So, and because now you're not just, it's not just hurt, but the person just, you know, basically just broke that trust or that bond that's there. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, so you don't number 17 is yeah. motivate. Let me be your motivation. <laughs> so motivate um basically just always encouraging the person mm-hmm. so always keep pushing forward when you see the person is down or when you see the person is up and they're doing a good job you tell them that they're doing a good job you tell them you know you're encouraging them and what they're doing on um, whatever it is you know we always talk about that their, their dreams and hopes and visions and whatever they're doing you all you you keep them if if not anybody else, you make sure you're the person who's motivating them to do better. And also I think that goes with honesty. You being the honest person and saying, Hey, I think you can you can do this better or you can yeah. say this better or this about your character, I think this can be better than your character. I think you can yeah. be this way is is a little bit better. You know, motiv- motivation. Yes, yes. You know, I'm your personal cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be right on top. Yay! Jay, <laughs> oh, and, okay, I'm not going to say that whole name, but you get the point. All right. So, <laughs> next one goes into accountability. Mm. This is a this is a, a good one, too, because um, going back to what I was saying about um, honesty and being loyal, like if you make mistakes, everybody's gonna make mistakes. We're not gonna be perfect, and um, even those who you think have a perfect quote unquote perfect relationship, they still make mistakes, right? But it's, it comes down to you taking uh, responsibility on what you've done, and um, and that you're able to to um to apologize for what your mistakes, you know, taking accountability for it, and that's yeah, very yeah. important because. If you never take accountability for something, it goes to show that person that you don't respect them. Like you don't, mm. um, you're not gonna, you don't put effort into even making it work. You know that just knocks out all these other principles we have on yeah. our list. That's gonna knock out everything because what's the point of being with someone if they're not gonna take any accountability? Like they're, they're not even gonna acknowledge their mistakes. That's that's a big, that's a red flag. That's a whole. Yeah, yeah, so Yeah, I think that's definitely a way for people to know if they're in a relationship when if you're with somebody who can't take accountability when they when they know for a fact they've messed up yep. and they can't and they won't and they refuse to say that they apologize or that they're sorry, that's enough information right there to show you that they don't care enough about you or your feelings to apologize. Um, and I think if they're doing that, then you probably should check what's the reason why they're with you. Cause they're obviously not, not with you just for you, because if they cared about you, they would care enough to apologize. They would care enough, um, to, you know, not, not to have anything in between you two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So make sure that, you know, that forgiveness is there. Cause if they don't apologize, that mean also may they don't care about you forgiving them. They, they just don't care, period. So I think that when you show accountability for something, it's showing that you care about what the other person thinks about you and, and the relationship. Mm-hmm. I agree. So number nine. 19 we were at the almost at the end <laughs> <laughs> so number 19 is acceptance mm. Mm, so it's accepting i guess accepting the per. so it's good to motive it's good to motivate you know and tell the person look at the person's flaws and tell them you know i can see you doing this better i can see you doing that better mm-hmm. but also seeing the person just for who they are and just loving them for who they are at their mm-hmm. core. Yeah, accepting. I, I agree. Accepting 
I was it, it it connects to what I was saying before. One of our um with one of our principles that you know accepting how they that person thinks too, how they behave, you know um their personality, their mm-hmm. accepting their love languages. It all comes yeah, down yeah. to even accepting their political beliefs because everybody have their own political stance on things, mm-hmm. religious beliefs, all that. Mm-hmm. It all falls down on accepting, and yeah. even how even how accepting someone like physically too, because everybody I've I've also I've heard women have list of things that they look for from um for a man when they looking for a man they go based on looks a lot yeah. of what is the list like if you're not tall then nope if you're not tall you're out even if you're <laughs> like a good man for them they're not gonna mm-hmm. care <laughs> yeah that's that's accepting someone you know um yeah so i don't have nothing to say about that so moving into uh the next one mm-hmm. which is, is connection mm-hmm. and we definitely you and me definitely got connection have a connection yeah Everybody said in our first episode that they even felt the chemistry. I even I don't I didn't even know that we had some type of thing going on. That <laughs> stuff on. I didn't even like I wasn't even like paying attention. I was just like, oh, we're just friends doing this. Like, <laughs> 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 like, and I guess we we definitely have a connection because what happened? It was like the other few days ago. Oh yeah, we were talking about water jug or something. So like, oh my gosh, I was I'm ordering that now. <laughs> Oh yeah, like, yeah. I was saying something, some things. We like we're thinking some the same thing. So that yeah. was a, a connection. Like we're right there. We would and we didn't even um discuss about it. And what else? Yeah, we you know having a connection with someone is just like a deeper thing than just the physical. You know, being physically attracted to someone. It's just that connection is like it, it's hard to break because you have that bond. Mm. In the previous episode, we talked about how to create that bond, and when you and when you create that connection, it's is like whoa, this is like it's explosive. You can't mm. explain. It's just you know it's exciting because you can't really explain like how you're able to have. It's like a divine. It's like you're like you're aligning okay. with that person you're supposed to be with. That's all I have to say to that because I can't yeah. I, I can't explain it. <laughs> Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think it's I think it's important when you definitely kind of take your time with things, and mm-hmm. I think we did it the right way by kind of being friends first, because uh, we was like we all already said we we built that connection yep. and that bond by yep. being friends and. There was no hiding anything. We didn't hide anything from each other. We was just up front with each other with everything. We was we talked about everything. <laughs> I think that's how we built that connection and how we found out that we liked liked a lot of things and had a lot of things in common that we didn't even know probably before that we had in common. So yeah, this connection mm-hmm. and then number. 21 is last but not least, I think the most important one is um, prayer. So yes. prayer is, is our personal um, belief. We think that you should definitely have God in the center of your relationship. Um, I believe that when you got God in your life and just especially in your relationship guiding you, you know, it helps you to forgive. It helps you to love that the right way. You know, when the person messes up, when the when or when you're trying to love somebody the right way, or you're building a connection with that person, you got that divine energy, that divine anointing and, and wisdom from God mm-hmm. um, to know what to do and how and how to do it with with that person. You're doing it the I believe you're doing it the right way. And I, I believe prayer helps you have a whole nother different kind of connection with that person. It yes. helps you to, to um, 
basically when you on your human side when you if you ever feel like you ready to give up or if you don't you really don't understand you might not be able to talk to the person directly but you can always go to god or even vice versa you can you can pray with each other and you know help help each other figure out things about the relationship about things in each other's lives you pray for each other you pray with each other so yeah we we definitely pray we pray with each other which has which has made a difference mm. um in our relationship and um compared to any other relationships I've had this is definitely a very different relationship but also a very um aligned relationship if that makes sense <laughs> It's a line. We, it's like we were aligned now. It's like finally, I can honestly say, I met someone that I meant. I've met someone I meant to meet or be with, mm. and I met my person. That's it. <laughs> you was right, and you was right in front of me this whole time. That's how that's how God works. Sometimes you have your, he'll have what's meant to be in your life right in front of you, and you just don't, you don't see it at first. Yeah. I think we. We was around each other, like you said. We we was we around each other. We were younger, but we yeah, younger. Talk. And then in our younger adult life, when we was in our early twenties, and yeah. then now uh, when we're about to be thirty, 30 just a. <laughs> I'm almost so, about to be thirty. I'm an old woman. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like all of those was like significant times. It's just weird that we was around each other and all and all those different areas of our life and we never even really expected it to be like that yeah definitely expect the unexpected right yeah definitely so, so you know we just wanted to um we want to talk about our principles inspire anyone who is started a relationship or who is in a relationship you know to to create your own principles. You know, it doesn't have to be 21 principles, though. You can do 10. You can do as many as you want. Because I feel like it has helped us to actually visually, it has helped us to visually see um, our foundation. I'm a visual person. So I mean, I, a lot of people is visual, but I actually, it's it's um good to write, you know, things down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I... It's crazy because I want to add something, one more thing. It's crazy because I started writing everything that I wanted in my life, everything, like what I wanted the guy, what I need to work on, all this, all everything. And now everything is manifesting, like uh, with my goals, not only my goals, but also just meeting, uh, meeting John that's manifested in my life because I, I wrote down like everything I was looking for, not just looks about the the look physical, but also about like the the qual um the qualities, the character the character traits and qualities. Yes, once I wrote down what wrote once I wrote down those qualities this year, that's when you came into the picture, which is crazy. That's what I wanted to share, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> it's, it's like after that because this happened like. When did I write down? I wrote it down this year. That's all I know. I remember writing it down for what I was looking for in a guy, in a man. And then you came into the picture, ironically, you know. Yes, you got to write it down and make it plain. It's weird because I, I wrote mine down this year and what I wanted in a woman. And we actually shared each other's um list. Yes, we did. And it's, it's crazy because when we looked at each other's list, we, it's, not just it was crazy because not just the physical, but it was also the character of the person that we wrote down, and yeah, we fit line for line who we wanted. It's it's just <laughs> I'm telling you if you if you write it down, and also if you if you pray about it, mm-hmm. it'll, it'll come to pass. You just gotta have patience, you know, patience, mm-hmm. and faith. So yeah, definitely. Definitely have patience with it though. Um, I definitely would say anybody that's in a single area in your life and you being single, just be, be, um, I guess confident in, in yourself and be okay 
with yourself and being single, you know, keep the faith that God will bring somebody to you that cares about you, um, if that's God's will for your life. But also, I would just say definitely be ha- be happy in who you are as a person, and that that person will automatically come. And definitely don't think that, you know, there's no more good men out there or there's no more good women out there because there's still good people out there. You just got to keep being being good yourself. And you and when it comes, you got to be ready to receive that. So, you have to be open. Mm-hmm. That's principle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this has been another episode of CJ. All right. Just being honest, nothing but the truth.